This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Raider and Coach Bobby Wilder. Another Saturday, another miserable day for football. Despite traveling north to escape the storm here in Hampton Roads, the Old Dominion football team found another rainy cold stadium, this time in Huntington, West Virginia. On the other side of the field, the Monarchs face the defending conference champions, Marshall, a team on a roll. The result, a 20 point loss, but with a week off to pull themselves together, ODU looks to rebuild. And how are they doing it? Well, let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Coach, I know you were disappointed by last year's, by last week's score, but your mm -hmm. kids, and when I say kids, I mean they are really young. They went toe to toe with a really good team. Yeah, they, they did, Bruce. I was really proud of them. The approach coming off the, the embarrassment at home, Appalachian State, we talked about three things. We needed to play with pride, we needed to play with passion, and we needed to be a physical football team. And you mentioned the youth, 33 of the 53 that played Saturday versus Marshall are first or second year players. But they came out in this game, Bruce. They were excited to play. They wanted to atone for the previous week. And there was a moment, Bruce, that nobody would have seen. It was in the third quarter. We're down 14-0. There's a TV timeout. And our defense is huddled on the sideline with Coach Nagy and the staff waiting to get out on the field and all of a sudden they start jumping up and down they start pushing each other they start yelling over to the marshall kids bring it on it was just inspiring to see i've never seen something like that from an old dominion team and we went out got a three and out and forced a punt so it's it's coming it's coming together we're going to get better all right let's talk defense for a minute coach uh marshall really only had one long scoring drive mm -hmm. the other scores came after a turnover mm -hmm. and after a bad punt that put them in really good field position yeah we, we gave up 27 points which our kids felt after the game was too much we've got to get better at that but to your point they had a 13 play 85 yard drive where the third down got us four times they converted on third down we've worked hard at that this week in practice but six of their 14 drives Bruce were three and out six of their drives started on our side of the field two off of short punts uh, and the others off of either a turnover situations or just bad field position in general and, and the response was outstanding we gave up 20 points which you don't want to do they had two touchdowns on short fields but we forced three punts uh, when all they needed was a first down to get in field goal range. So we were back to the wall a lot in this game, Bruce. Their average field position was the 40. Ours was our own 23. Uh, but we're getting better on that side of the ball. All right, so looking ahead, you have a week off, and I mm -hmm. assume it couldn't have come at mm -hmm. a better time. Yeah, good time, Bruce. At four weeks of preseason, five, five weeks of the season. So the kids have been going at it nine straight weeks. Chance to get healed up, chance to really turn our focus to academics. Uh, and then also, Bruce, from our standpoint, the coaching staff, we get to do a self-scout evaluation. We get to just look at ourselves. What are we doing well? What do we need to build on? What do we need to focus on? So a good week and good timing for this break. The last thing that you want to do as a coach and as a program is to panic. Mm -hmm. And I heard you quote Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers this week in that regard. Mm -hmm. Can you share that with us? I can. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. We're, we're going to be fine. And not only a message, most importantly for, for our team, Bruce, because it's critical. You have to stay focused on the process. You, and I believe this in football, in life, in business, whatever it is. If you've got a plan and you're telling everybody in your organization, this is the plan, this plan's going to work, and then you panic and you change your plan, everybody in your organization looks at you and goes, wait a minute, what, what have you been saying for the last seven years you've been the head coach that this is what we're doing, now all of a sudden we're going to change. And that's not what we need right now. We need to stay focused on the process of winning, that's planning, that's preparation, that's execution, being consistent. We're going to be a good football team. We've just played three teams in NC State, App State, Marshall. They're all going to be bowl teams. They all could win their divisions. They're a combined 11-3 and three right now. So take a step back, have a little perspective, and let's work to improve our entire program. Yeah, but on the other hand, there wasn't a whole lot of relaxing this week because you mm -hmm. scrimmaged on Wednesday and on Thursday mm -hmm. with an emphasis on situation football. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Yeah, it's, I'm glad you brought that up, Bruce. Normally in a bye week, you try to just get healed up, work on some things in practice, but we really felt like as a team, everybody, players and coaches, that we needed to put the uniforms on, we needed to go to the stadium, and we needed to play simulated games with as many 
first, second year players as we've got. They need to play football to improve. So it was uh, working on two minute offense and defense. It was working on third down play, fourth down, because third down we've struggled offensively. We're eighth in the league. Defensively, we're 12th in the league on third down conversions. And you know as well as anybody, Bruce, if you convert on offense, that's three more plays. If you stop them on defense, you get to the sideline. So we did that. We worked on red zone offense and defense. We needed to work special teams, Bruce. We needed live work on our kickoff return, our pun, our pump block units, all those areas. So major emphasis on situational football and how to react in those situations. And not just doing it, but you have to teach your kids how to react and what play is going to be called. You have one of the best running backs in mm -hmm. all of college football, but now your opponents know that. Mm -hmm. How do you get Ray Low Lowry loose again? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting you brought that up. He's the leading rusher in Conference USA. He's 11th in the nation right now. So what's encouraging is the ability to run the ball is going to help our pass game. Now, everybody knows we need to get the pass game back going, and we will. The, the first game of the year at Eastern Michigan, the quarterback completes 65%, throws for 185 yards, so we can throw the ball, we can catch the ball. We've had some difficult weather situations along with difficult competition. Three of the last four games have been in rain and, and wind, which makes it difficult for a quarterback anyway. But the fact that we can run the ball, Bruce, is going to make our pass game improve, and we will get that better. All right, and the Monarchs' defense has stepped up its play this season and one of the reasons is sophomore safety Justice Davila and coming up next he enters the one minute drill with Brian Parsons. Welcome back to the Old Dominion Football Show. The One Minute Drill with us this week. The victim is sophomore safety Justice Davila. Did I do that correctly? You did, you did. Uh, got a nice, some, some nice tats here. Well, what's, what's the story behind this here? Uh, well, tattoos, I would say, in this generation are starting to get a little famous. And just like the tribal look, I want to say the rock. Justice, you're from New Jersey. A lot of sports teams to, to, to choose from up there. Who are your favorite sports teams growing up? I would have to say the Philadelphia Eagles by far. My family's very into football in the NFL, and they've been my team since they won. They've had some good years. They've had some lean years. Have you ever cried as a kid when the Eagles lost a game? Honestly, I can't say I have, but I was pretty upset when we finally made the Super Bowl and still lost. That, that one hurt, so, yeah. To the Patriots? Yeah, and we had T.O. too, and he was a problem that year, but we should work it out. We should work it out. Coach Bugs, is Coach Bugs uh, an intense coach? I will say he's intense when it's needed, when uh, you're not doing your job, or he sets a certain expectation for each of us, and when they're not met, it gets intense. Yeah. What would you do if somebody took away your iPhone for three days? Wow. Uh, that's a good question. I can't even answer that. What would I do? I'd probably have to find an iPod <laughs> and just see what I can do with that. Maybe do somebody else's, I don't know. Uh, do you follow Bobby Wilder on Instagram? Yeah, I do, I do. Uh, uh, how is he good at Instagram? <laughs> uh, he's a beginner, I'll leave it at that, he's a beginner. <laughs> Sophomore safety, Justice DeVito, looking to have a big season for ODU. You say goodbye to the Monarch Nation, Justice. Hey, let's get ready for the season. See you. Time now for the Coach's Corner. This week's question comes to us via Twitter, and it's from Larry Eakin. He asks, any chance we go back to the spread, at least some, to help Shuler Bentley break out of his slump? Yeah, that's predominantly what we've been doing, Larry. We've been uh, in the spread offense. We had a plan in preseason with Melvin Vaughn from Oscar Smith High School, who had been an outstanding wide receiver for us. Melvin put on 20 pounds was up to 250. He was having a great spring, Bruce. Phenomenal summer. We were going to play more tight end to create a little more edge, which would help even more with the run game. And then Melvin goes down with the torn ACL. So we've been primarily four wide spread. A little bit of two back where we put Zach Pascal in the backfield. We ran the ball a lot with him in Norfolk State. So we're trying to find ways to create a surface. But primarily right now, uh, it's a spread offense. Thanks for the question, Larry. And if you have a question for Coach Wilder, email it to me at bruce.rader at wavy.com or on Twitter, Bruce Raider Sport. 
There is no game tomorrow, but there is a week from tomorrow, and it's homecoming. Always a special weekend at SB Ballard it Stadium. It is great, and great to, uh, the way homecoming is now, the way the university does it, President Broderick and all the administration make it a special day, and it's going to be the 45th consecutive cello. Bruce, i got to give a shout-out to our students. They claimed um, 3,900 tickets, and they did it 44 tickets per minute. That's how quickly they grabbed them up. So a shout out to the Old Dominion students and their loyalty. Just phenomenal. All right. That's going to be a lot of fun. A week from Saturday. Next week we'll talk about Charlotte and we'll see how your week went. Mm -hmm. For all of you, enjoy your weekend and join us every Friday night at 1045 for the Old Dominion football show. And if you'd like to see it again, you can go to wavy.com and you can click on sports. Mm -hmm. For you high school football fans, Friday Night Flights is coming up next on Wavy TV 10. Again, have a great weekend. Good night, everybody.